Today in this lecture we are going to discuss the failure of increased total peripheral resistance to elevate or increase the arterial pressure if fluid intake and renal functions do not change. Why are we interested in failure of increased total peripheral resistance to elevate the arterial pressure if the fluid intake and renal functions do not change? It is important because the arterial pressure the arterial pressure we have discussed is basically a product of cardiac output into total peripheral resistance. It simply means that if the cardiac output increase, the arterial pressure will increase. Similarly, if the total peripheral resistance, the total peripheral resistance increase, the arterial pressure will increase again. Because the arterial pressure is the product of cardiac output into total peripheral resistance. But if the increase in total peripheral resistance fail to increase the arterial pressure, why can such a situation occur? How will the increase in total peripheral resistance, how an increase in total peripheral resistance can fail to increase the arterial pressure? That's why Today we are going to discuss the failure of increased total peripheral resistance to elevate the arterial pressure if fluid intake and renal functions do not change. Now the, in, the arterial pressure is the product of cardiac output and total peripheral resistance. This is one thing but another important thing is that arterial pressure is very much dependent on renal functions and intake of fluid and salt. Now we have discussed again and again in the previous two lectures that if we plot the renal function curve and curve for intake of salt and water, we see that there is a point known as the equilibrium point. Equilibrium point. At this very point, the intake of fluid, the intake of fluid and salt is equal to the output of fluid and salt by the kidneys. This red color graph is basically the renal function curve and the black line is showing the intake of fluid and water, uh, fluid and salt. And the point at which both of these are equal is known as the equilibrium point and this equilibrium point is basically at the level of arterial pressure of 100 mm of mercury. This is normal. And we discussed again that the determinants of arterial pressure are the intake of salt and water and the fluid, uh, the renal functions. In order to bring a change in the arterial pressure, in order to change the arterial pressure which is normally 100 mm of mercury, 100 millimeter of mercury, in order to bring a change in this level, there must be a change in the renal function curve or there must be a change in the intake of salt and water. Now we see that at normal renal functions, in normal renal functions, the arterial pressure was 100. But a change in renal function occurred and this arterial pressure shifted from the 100 mm of mercury to 200 mm of mercury. This change in renal function can occur due to any reason, like kidney can decrease their function due to any reason, any pathology can decrease the functions of kidneys, which will basically decrease the renal output and the arterial pressure will increase from 100. Similarly, if the intake of salt in water is increased 3 to 4 times, this again will shift the arterial pressure from 100 to around 200 at this very point. So, the determinants of arterial pressure were basically the renal function and intake of salt and water. And then again, arterial pressure is basically product of cardiac output and total peripheral resistance. It means that whenever cardiac output 
or total peripheral resistance increase there should be an increase in arterial pressure but practically if there is no change in the renal function and there is no change or in the increase in of there is no change in intake of salt and water in the long run in the long run in the long run there will be no change in the arterial pressure change will occur in the arterial pressure for short duration only short duration if the total peripheral resistance increase arterial pressure will increase for a short term only if if the fluid intake and renal functions do not change now this thing is being explained on the graph suppose for example this graph is showing the cardiac output in arterial pressure on the y axis like the y axis is showing the arterial pressure and cardiac output and the x axis is showing the total peripheral resistance and the cardiac output and peripheral resistance is being measured in different conditions like very very anemia removal of four limbs and hypothyroidism now in all these conditions the total peripheral resistance is being changed in the hypothyroidism the total peripheral resistance has increased the normal peripheral resistance is at this very point 100 level total peripheral resistance is at the 100 level at this point but in the hypothyroidism the total peripheral resistance has increased the total peripheral resistance has increased in hypothyroidism similarly the removal of all four limbs from the human body has also increased the total peripheral resistance but some conditions like anemia and beriberi has basically decreased the total peripheral resistance to this very point in all these conditions the in hypothyroidism in removal of limbs in anemia in beriberi the cardiac output has changed the cardiac output has changed now this y axis is basically showing the cardiac output as well as the arterial pressure so in hypothyroidism the cardiac output has decreased to this point in removal of all the limbs the cardiac output has decreased to this point in anemia the cardiac output has increased to this point in very very the cardiac output has increased to this point from this normal level this 100 is the normal level of cardiac output and arterial pressure the cardiac output has increased and decreased increased and decreased in different conditions depending upon the total peripheral resistance but the arterial pressure has remained the same this is the arterial pressure line and it has remained at this 100 level throughout uh, these conditions throughout the change uh, the changes that have been produced by the increase or decrease in total peripheral resistance so there has been a failure a failure of increased total peripheral resistance to elevate the arterial pressure the total peripheral resistance has increased this way in hypothyroidism and in removal of all the limbs but it has failed to elevate the arterial pressure because the fluid intake in renal functions have not changed in these conditions if in a condition like chronic kidney disease the renal functions change then a slight change in total peripheral resistance will definitely produce a change in the arterial pressure but all in all these conditions like beriberi anemia hypothyroidism or removal of limbs and many many more conditions which we have not mentioned here in all these conditions the total peripheral resistance has increased and it has decreased and it has brought a change in the cardiac output which is being shown by the red color but it has failed it has failed to bring a change in the arterial pressure which is at the 100 level so the purpose of this lecture is to demonstrate the failure of increased total peripheral resistance to elevate the arterial pressure if the fluid intake and renal functions do not change if the renal functions and fluid intake do not change 
there will be no change in the arterial pressure in the long run i am repeating it in the long run in a short run in or for a short duration there will be a change in the arterial pressure if the total peripheral resistance increase or if the total if the cardiac output increase but in the long run if there is no change in this graph if the intake remains at this level and if the renal function curve remain the same there will be no change in the arterial pressure there will be no change in the arterial pressure cardiac output may change but the arterial pressure will remain the same despite of changing in the changes in the total peripheral resistance so to summarize this lecture the arterial pressure is basically product of cardiac output and total peripheral resistance change in cardiac output or change in total peripheral resistance should change the arterial pressure and uh, the arterial pressure change but the change will be for short uh, duration if if the fluid intake and renal function curve do if the and the renal functions do not change a real change in arterial pressure will occur only if there is a change in the renal functions if the renal function curve shift or there is increase in the intake of salt and water so that's about the failure of the total peripheral resistance to in elevate or increase the arterial pressure if fluid intake and renal function functions do not change thanks a lot for watching the video